hello everyone siksha here again today we will be going through the second lesson of our plant growth regulators i had told you i'll prepare three lessons and here was the second lesson before starting i would like to say that if you like my videos or if you feel my videos are helpful please do follow me on the ad academy app and if you feel there are some suggestions that you want to give me let me know i will try to implement them in my next lessons definitely so today we'll be talking about two plant growth regulators one is gibberellin and the other is cytokinin let's start with our gibberellin now how was gibberellin discovered it was first known in japan how it was known the Jap the japanese people saw that certain rice plants or certain rice seedlings grew excessively tall like they grew beyond their normal length and what they this japanese people call this disease as they named it as bakane or foolish seedling now you might think what is this foolish seedling sort of thing my teacher in my school days had told me one thing which i remember and i would like you all to know that as well that will help you in remembering why it was known as foolish seedling there was a myth in japan then that all tall are foolish so because it used to increase beyond its normal length it was known as foolish now years later a japanese pathologist named e kurosawa found out that this disease was actually caused due to a fungus which is known as gibberella fujikorai now how a fungus can cause a disease definitely the fungus is emitting or the fungus is secreting some substance due to which this disease is being caused this particular substance was extracted from that gibberella fujikorai by yabuta and sumiki which goes the isolation of gibberellins we can see the general information here like what is the basic knowledge we should have about gibberellins their precursor is acetyl coenzyme a more than 100 types reported means they are reported as like their nomenclature is ga1 ga2 ga3 ga4 and so on okay and they are also known as gibberellic acid that's why they are known as ga ga stands for gibberellic acid and the most extensively studied gibberellin or the first gibberellin to be discovered one of the first gibberellin to be discovered and also the most studied is your ga3 now this is a very important point from the examination point of view and i want you all to make a note of this which is the most extensively studied gibberellin that is ga3 let's go to the physiological uh, effects and applications i want you all to see this this is an important part you should know see first of all it stimulates stem elongation that was because you saw uh, it was i told you earlier about the foolish seedling disease that is caused due to increase in length of the plant that is what it is its application is physiological uh, stem elongation what next it does it increases the length of the axis to elongate the length of grape stalks now the length of grape stalks is an example that i have given here what it actually does is it increases the length of the axis of the plant now in grapes one stalk has a lot of cluster of grapes or one small stem has a lot of cluster of grapes so if the stalk is very short the grapes will get completely clustered and there will be congestion due to which the grapes can burst and the fruits can be damaged so what do usually farmers do is or the orchard people what they do is they apply gibberellins to the stalks the gibberellins uh, cause the increase in length of the axis and that causes the elongation of the length of the grapes so the fruits are put apart or the fruits are spaced apart they do not damage each other and hence it increases uh, the life of the fruit on the tree now what do they do sorry they also increase the size of the fruits example apple and improve the shape now apple is just an example that i have given you because it's there in your ncrt now because we will be following ncrt mainly in our biology that is most required i have cited examples only from ncrt which you are bound to follow okay so back to the lesson we can see in the increase the size of the fruit example apple and improve the shape most important i want you to make a note of is that the delay ripening and senescence <coughs> they delay the ripening of the fruits why they increase the length of the stalk and that is one reason and the other their own metabolic effect is that they delay the ripening they help to retain the fruit on the tree longer 
increase the market there this i have already talked here you can see elongate the length of the grape stalks so this is also sort of application of this point they help to retain the fruit on the tree longer increase the market period the speed of the malting process in brewing industry malting process means that the extraction of uh, the wine that is known as not not suddenly wine that yeast metabolism process is known as malting they also increase the stem length of the sugar cane crop again this is an effect of this stem elongation part and the yield increases by 20 tons per acre now more is the length of the sugar cane more the sugar cane you can extract so that causes a increase in the commercialization of the sugar cane they also promote bolting or internet elong internode elongation prior to flowering which helps in profuse flowering now what happens is that usually when internodes are small internodes when they are small leaves come out very much and flower production is reduced so before flowering there should be the a long internode or the internode should be lengthened what do the gibberellins do is that they promote the internode elongation that is known as bolting this physiological effect of the gibberellins is known as bolting this helps in profuse flowering they also stimulate seed germination in synthesizing by synthesizing hydrolysis this is a very important point very very important point from the examination sort of view and i can guarantee this is a question that is almost expected in any of your entrance examinations that you are going to appear that which plant growth regulator helps in synthesizing hydrolysis like proteases or amylases amylases for the mobilization of the nutrients to help in seed germination and your answer will be and will definitely be gibberellins there should be no confusion about this okay this is a point i'm stressing so i want you all to take a note of this now like another point is that they cause early maturity in juvenile economical conifers now in there are some economic conifers which are important um, from the market point of view and they need to be flowered or they need to flower early or they need more flowering so that we can extract the seeds and fruits so to make or to you know increase the what do you call that maturity or you, you cause the early maturity in them they are sprayed with gibberellic acid or gibberellin that causes their um, hastens the process of maturity so that they can be they can start the reproductive phase very soon and end their juvenile phase as soon as possible so that they can flower more and that can be economically more important so this was all a brief idea about your gibberellins i hope it helped you if you want more information you can just ping me i will send you the notes or i will send you any material which i have with me okay so next we will talk about cytokinins that is our next plant growth regulator and this is our last positive or promoting growth promoting plant growth regulator the next two that we'll be studying in the next lesson will be our inhibiting plant growth regulators so discovery f skoog and his co-workers you should remember who discovered this is a very important point mentioned in the ncrt book as i said i have been following the ncrt book this was discovered in f skoog and his workers now how they discovered is that they started callus proliferation of tobacco they took a tobacco callus and they tried to proliferate it in vitro or in laboratory and they saw that along with auxin one of the following had to be supplied to cause the development in the plant and what was all like out of these four that you can see i have put away a b c d one of them had to be supplied what is that one is either extracts of vascular tissue or yeast extract or coconut milk or dna like what happened is that auxin promoted root elongation or root development but for shoot development they found necessary that auxin is not sufficient some other has to be some other has to be provided so they found that for their uh, shoot synthesis any of these four worked later they discovered or not f skoog miller and his co-workers discovered from autoclave herring sperm dna one cytokinin which is known as kinetin now one thing that is very funny over here is that when i was studying for all this i literally 
had to mug up this autoclave herring sperm DNA. I had literally no idea what this is. I used to just mug it up that it is autoclave herring sperm DNA, just like an abbreviation. So now that I'm going to teach you, I should know what it is. So I just found it. I just went it and googled it up, and I found on the internet what is actually this. Herring is actually a fish. That herring part you see, this one here over here, herring that you see, this is actually a fish. This produces a very sticky oil. Now the DNA which is purified from this herring sperm is known as herring sperm DNA. Or the DNA that is purified from the sperm of this fish is known as herring sperm DNA. Now we can understand this herring sperm DNA part. Now what is this autoclave? Autoclave is actually a pressure chamber that is used to heat substances. Okay, there is a pressure chamber, and when heat is supplied, the substances inside it get heated up under immense pressure. So when it is sterilized, when that herring sperm DNA is sterilized due to usage of steam at high pressure, what we get is autoclave herring sperm DNA. Now, what was discovered from that autoclave herring sperm DNA? A kinetin named cytokinin was discovered. But this kinetin is not a you know it is not a natural product. It is actually a synthetic cytokinin that is usually found. So then we will see how it was isolated. This was isolated from young maize grain or kernels known as zeatin. Zeatin is a natural one most probably. It's not most probably zeatin is a natural cytokinin and also it was extracted from the coconut milk. You we saw in the coconut milk when it was extra put on the tobacco callus culture test it you caused shoot elongation or shoot development along with auxin so coconut milk also contains cytokinin now what is the basic knowledge we need to know about cytokinin it occurs in all regions of rapid cell division and it is chemically modified purine like zeatin is an example that is benzyl amino purine is its chemical name or bap you will learn about this in your plant breeding like strategies for enhancement of food production chapter that is plant breeding there you will know that BAP is used in callus culture in micropropagation and all that you will learn that later. Now we will see the physiological effects in applications it helps in production of new leaves in chloroplast nothing to explain here you can see it helps in lateral shoot growth adventitious shoot formation. That means it helps in apical overcoming apical dominance. Now you had seen that apical dominance was caused by auxin, where auxin caused increase in length of the axis in one direction and it prevented the lateral bud formation and lateral shoot formation. This cytokinin does the opposite thing, it acts antagonistic and it overcomes apical dominance, it produces adventitious shoot. It delays the senescence of leaves and other part. This is known as Richmond Lang effect. This is a very, very important thing from the examination point of view, and I want you all to take note of this. And this is essential for cytokinesis, hence the name cytokinin cytokinesis. And it is used in callus culture along with auxin. It helps in shoot elongation, while auxin helps in root differentiation. So that's all for this video. I hope uh, this helped you in some way or the other. If you want more information, as I had already said, you can just ping me or you can just put up in the comment section. I will help you out. So thank you and have a nice day.